why is being a driving instructor a bit crap? Uh, what is it? Come on, tell what what come on, get, shout out some of the negatives of being a driving instructor. Long hours. Long hours. Unsocial hours. Unsocial hours. Absolutely right. Quite right. Sitting. Sitting. Yeah. Do you know what? Yes, it is. Do you know what? I was actually due to do uh, a run in September. My partner's just finished a thousand mile walk for, for MS and we finished it in Scotland. And on the Sunday I was used to do a walk. My left knee is in such bad condition at the moment, I couldn't do it. I said, I, honestly, I couldn't do it. When I went to the doctors, I, I'm on painkillers coming out of my ears at the moment. And he actually said, if you think about your job for the last six years, how many miles do you do per year? And I've said about 50,000. And he's gone, that's 300,000 miles. He said, you've travelled round the globe about nearly twice in third gear with your left foot above the clutch. <laughs> Which is so true, isn't it? So for the last six years, I've basically just been sat there doing that. No wonder my leg's knackered. <laughs> that's why I enjoy doing automatic lessons now. I can just have a stretch out. It's lovely. It's great. What else? What else is wrong with being an ADI? Smelly pupils. Smelly pupils. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially the ones when you get back in the seat and sort of the back of the seat's wet. You go, ah, can't do anything about that, can you? It's horrible. <laughs> what else? What else? Loneliness. Pardon? Loneliness. Loneliness. It is. It's an incredibly lonely job, isn't it? And yet everybody gets to the test centre and they all sit there with their arms folded. They go, all right, all right, you're busy. Yeah, I'm busy. No, you're not. Drive past your, drive past your driveway, your car's always there. <laughs> yeah, it's always that type of person, isn't it? Yeah? All the one goes, do you know how I do to teach the left reverse? I've got 100% pass rate. No, you haven't. Sit down, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Who here at school, when they did those careers days, turned round to their teachers and said, I'd like to be a driving instructor? <laughs> I am so pleased nobody put their hand up, yeah? Because if you had put your hand up, I'd have pointed you out and gone, freak! There you go, right? <laughs> Simple as that, OK? You guys have one of the hardest jobs in the country. It's as simple as that. You really do. Yeah? I mean, look at it. You know? You've got to be a HR manager. You've got to be a mechanic. You've got to be an office manager. You've got to be a marketer. You've got to be a counsellor. How many here know more about what's going on in their, in their pupils' lives than their parents do? Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Yeah? And then finally, you've got to be a driving instructor. All right? Now, if anybody knows those two, that's Claire and Jed Wilmot. OK? And it's the only decent picture I could find of... of of, dri of proper driving instructors other than people standing by the car going, look how proud I am. There you go, it's just not right. Okay? It's a terrible job, isn't it? Would you say that the industry has changed much? And I'm going to just refer back to the, my time in the industry. Would you say that the industry has changed much in the last six years? The silence is deafening. It hasn't. It actually hasn't changed pretty much in six years. Driving test has changed, sort of. And they're on about changing it again, sort of, OK? Your check test has now become a, sta uh, has, has, has become a standards check, but essentially is that, yeah, boo, thank you very much. You can have a T-shirt, you can. You were paying, <laughs> tell you what, you were paying attention, fella, eh? See, told you, pay attention. You never know, you might get a free book. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> yeah? But nothing's really changed. There are courses now on how to pass your standards check. Now, I'm not, no, I've got another t-shirt, don't push it, all right? <laughs> but there are other courses to pass it. I don't know any other industry, and if you think about it, please, by all means, do shout them out. I don't know any other industry where we support the weakest people in the industry to get them through. When was the last time you heard of a gas fitter being so dodgy, yeah, that actually all his mates turned around and went, you know what, we'll help you out. Yeah, we'll get you through your safety check. It's not a problem. Then you carry on and do what the hell you want. It doesn't work. Yeah? Did Asda and Sainsbury's ring up Tesco when they put out those absolutely awful results and go, hey, you had some shocking results, didn't you? Tell you what, do you want us to help you out? Do you want us to send our finance guys across to you so you can do some accounting properly? No. But in this industry, for some daft reason, what we do is we start putting standards check workshops on. So actually all we're doing is encouraging the guys that really can't be bothered to do it properly to do it properly for one hour every four years. What a stupid industry! It doesn't work! Yeah, in every other industry it's the survival of the fittest. Surely. Yeah, if you put the time and effort into your teaching and you put the time and effort into your business, surely you're going to survive. 
Training fleas requires a glass jar with a lid. The fleas are placed inside the jar and the lid is then sealed. They are left undisturbed for three days. Then, when the jar is opened, the fleas will not jump out. In fact, the fleas will never jump higher than the level set by the lid. Their behaviour is now set for the rest of their lives. And, when these fleas reproduce, their offspring will automatically follow their example. Now, who would say that's the ADI industry summed up in one video? Yeah? Once you're in the system, that's it. Basically, you're always told, no, that's the limit. Uh, you can only go as, top, as, as high as the jar. Who here has come up with quite a radical idea and has put it on Facebook and has got, uh, <laughs> Facebook, and then has got absolutely slaughtered by everybody around them? Who here has done that? You. Me! <laughs> yeah? I'd, my, the the fr first Fresh Start conference, I could show you the emails that I had from some very senior people that told me, quote, unquote, that I was an idiot if I thought I was going to change anything in this industry. Brilliant. Do you know what that made me do? Make me want to do it even more. Yeah? Because I love proving people wrong. One of the first things that happened to me when I first became a, a driving instructor was, obviously, I was with red, okay? But I turned up and I didn't have a roof box on because they have those pointy hats that look like a dunce hat. Don't get that, right? But they had those like, pointy hats, so I didn't have that. So I just had the car that was all logoed up. And there were a load of instructors in my area that were going, oh, why is your car all logoed up? Oh, well, you've got no roof box on. Oh, you won't last very long. I, no, actually, I will because I'm not like the rest of you. Oh, no, you won't last very long, all right? Six years on, how many of those instructors have now got their cars logoed up? How many of those instructors have now got telephone answering services? How many of those instructors have got in-car cameras? Yes, I actually had an in-car camera six years ago, believe it or not. Yeah? How many of those people have all of a sudden just gone, actually, he's the one that's just gone above the lid? Yeah? That sounds like I'm bigging myself up, and I am to a point, but they were really simple things to me, and I couldn't understand why nobody else was doing it. Okay? All right? First off, I want to say thank you. I am going to say thank you from me. Okay? I'm going to say thank you to every single one of you for turning up. I'm going to say thank you to every single one of you for doing the jobs that you do. One, because I don't know anybody daft enough to do it, other than you lot. But two, you do an incredibly dangerous job. I want you to give yourselves a round of applause. Go on, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> And the reason I'm not asking you to give yourself a round of applause is because you're different. It's a Wednesday morning. There's about oh, 50, 60 of you here, okay? So, actually, how many other instructors can't be bothered to improve their business? How many other instructors can't be bothered to take time out of their busy diaries to come and learn something new? You guys did. Actually, in my head, that puts you in the top 2%. Because if you look at all conferences and all training nationally, the national associations can only get 100, maybe 150, 200 people to any of their big conferences that they do over the years. Okay? But essentially, behind these two, these two books is this guy. Oh, hopefully that's going to move. There you go. It's Andy Cope. All right? He has basically got a degree in happy. All right? But he's from Derby. The irony, eh? <laughs> He's from Derby. That's the most cheerful picture I could find of him, really. Or if you just type in Andy Cope, there's some miserable pictures, so you wouldn't actually think that he's one of the happiest guys on the planet, OK? What he's done over 10 years, 10 years he's done this, is that he's actually based his, his books and his, his thesis on the fact that in mental health terms, we only ever look at people when they're ill. We only ever look at people when there's something wrong with them. So he kind of spun it on his head, because there have got to be some happy people out there. There have got to be some brilliant people out there, surely. And he refers to them as the top 2%. 
So over the last 10 years, basically, he's gone up and down the country chatting to happy people. Yeah? OK? <laughs> You're looking, going, good God, that, yeah, it's mind-numbing, isn't it, talking to happy people all the time. I get that, OK? And actually, it just came out with four words. I can sum up his entire 10 years' worth of work in four words. They choose to be positive. OK? They just choose to be positive. Yeah? Just by choosing to be positive doesn't mean that the rain's not going to rain on them. Doesn't mean that they haven't got the same problems as the rest of us. They have. It's just that they look at it in a slightly different perspective. OK? Now, you're all sort of sat there going, well, what's that got to do with being a driving instructor? I get that. OK? But I also get the fact that you're also thinking, well, what's that got to do with my business? All right? You've got a choice to make. You can choose to be brilliant. You can choose to be the best in your area. You can choose to be the best in your city, your town, your community. You can choose to be fantastic. And the thing is that when it comes to being a driving instructor, all right, your business branding is your personal branding. Because people buy you, don't they? They do, don't they? How many, pe how many people here get referrals? Good, I'm, I'm glad everybody's put their hands up. That's excellent, otherwise you're in the wrong workshop. <laughs> That's a different day, okay? Good, okay? When people ring up and they've come from referrals, out of 10, how many people ask you the price? None? One? Two, maybe? Okay, why is that? Pardon? Yeah, don't have to ask. Well, why don't, they have, why, why don't they ask? Why don't they ask? Because they've been referred. Why have they been referred? Because you're good. Why are you good? Because you're brilliant. That is the right answer. Okay? You've impressed one of their friends, one of their family members, so much that price doesn't become a problem. It just doesn't become a problem. Okay? Because you've impressed them. You've impressed them. It's not the car that you drive, okay? It's not how sweet smelling the car is. It's actually not even about the price after a certain point because people just get used to paying it, yeah? How many people here have got gym memberships they've never actually taken up? <laughs> Me, yeah? All started at New Year, we go to the gym, yeah, it's 20 pounds a month, lovely. We go twice in our bad fitting lycra for a middle-aged man. It's never right, okay? We go twice and that's it. But you know what? When was the last time I looked at my bank account to actually sort of like, oh, that 20 pounds going out, I really must go to the gym. It doesn't happen. People just get used to paying it, okay? So the pupils that you have now just get used to paying what they're paying. They don't question it, they don't argue about it, anything like that. So when you get people ringing up, going, my mate John has had driving lessons with you, he says, you're brilliant. When can I start? And you put the phone down. I don't know why I do that when I say I put the phone down, because nobody does that anymore. Yeah, they just go, eep, that's it, yeah? Just as an aside, don't you think the person that came up with 999 on the old style telephone numbers had a really sick sense of humour? Yeah. yeah? Nine. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> I'm dead. Right, <laughs> house is burnt down, it's too late. Yeah, <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Okay? But when you put that phone down, that sudden thought just creeps into your mind going, I didn't tell them the price. How many instructors then ring up and go, do you want to know the prices? I know people who do that. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Don't, they've bought into you, all right? If you go onto uh, YouTube, there is a TED video by a guy called Simon Cernek, okay? And he's also uh, written a book called The Reason Why. And it's 15 minutes. If you know anything about TED Talks, TED Talks are on so many different subjects, but they're only allowed about 16 minutes in which to speak. So they have to get, out, get their point over and across. And it was one of the very first videos I watched on TED. And effectively, what he was saying is that people buy from people. And he used, uh, it's, what, it's what called the golden circle. Okay? So you've got the what on the outside. you then got the how. But the main, pe the main reason people were buying from people was the why. Why were they buying? And describe what words, what three words describe your business at its worst. I'm not talking about you. 
I want to describe your business at its worst. Okay? This might be a little bit painful, but I want you to be honest and shout out a couple of words. All right? Is it the fact that you're late? You can be a bit lazy sometimes. Yeah, we all get it on the Friday afternoon at three o'clock and we're thinking, last lesson, down the pub, that'd be quite nice. This is actually really hard to do because the more you think about it, the more paranoid you become about it. And do you know who's the best to ask what your business is at its worst? It's your pupils, the customers. Because if you don't know what you're doing wrong, how do you know what you can do better? We're all arrogant. I'm, I'm arrogant to a point of just beyond belief, where I think I'm brilliant at everything. Yeah? My partner will tell me something completely different. Yeah? Like I didn't do the washing up last night before I left. Sorry. And I had a very abusive text message last night when I got into the hotel. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm, I can be lazy. My paperwork is shocking. It's terrible. My, I hate paperwork. Yeah? I'd rather spend three hours designing a lovely presentation like this than spending 20 minutes doing my paperwork. That's why I have an accountant. Yeah? It's as simple as that. I, I just give them a box and go, sort that out. Thanks very much. You're paid for that. Okay? Who here has asked their pupil or their customers for feedback in the last 12 months of any kind? Okay? Was it all good feedback? Most of it, okay? Most of it. What did you do with the stuff that wasn't so good? You took it on board and did something about it. All right? Well done. You're in the minority. Because psychologically, what we do is we run away from it. We just go, nah, just forget it. Nah, that's, that's not a problem. Okay? What three words describe your business at its best? What would you say is, what, I'm going to pick on you because you looked straight at me when I was just opening my mouth. All right? What, 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 give me one word that would say what your business is at its best. Independence. Good. Why is that brilliant? Why is being independent brilliant? You're in control. You're in control. Like that. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct because it was the same thing I was thinking about. Cool, it's like a mind trick. It's very good. Hey. You will buy one of my books. Oh, sorry, it's Star Wars. That's December. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Independence is great for some of the independent guys because you don't have to go through chains of command yeah, to make a decision. Yeah? I go back, to, you know, go back to some of the big businesses in the world. Yeah? Somebody comes up with an idea. How many different meetings do they have to go through to get one simple thing implemented? If you come up with an idea now, you can implement it on your way home, you can do it as soon as you get home, you can do it first thing in the morning. Independent, great. Give us another word for what is, what is brilliant about your business. Responsive. Responsive. See, goes with independence. I like it. It's very, very good. What else? Reliability. Flexible, reliability, absolutely. Uh, Referrals, absolutely. Yeah, if you've got testimonials coming out of your ears, probably. Yeah. Enjoying it. Enjoying it. Absolutely right. Do you know what? Again, I, this is why I said earlier, is that you guys are different. You guys are genuinely, genuinely different because you're enjoying it. You're here. You want to learn more about your business. You want to improve your business. There are many driving instructors and you know them. You know them. They're sat in the test centre. They are the curmudgeon. They are the ones that are sticking the mud. They are the ones that sit there and go, it'll never work. It'll never work. Yeah, it's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's never their fault. <laughs> you can either be... 100% brilliant, or you can be crap. It's as simple as that. I'm giving you a choice. I'm giving you a choice this morning. Yeah, is that's what you want to be? Who are your customers? Students. Mainly students and their parents. Think bigger. The general, the general public. Everyone. Your local community. <coughs> Your local community, in fact, are your customers, okay? Because what you do is such a dangerous job, okay? You don't teach these kids very well. What are they going to go out and do in your community? Crash, yeah? Drive like complete numpties, yeah? They are, aren't they? They're just going to drive like complete numpties, yeah? And when they turn around and go, oh, so-and-so taught me, 
Yeah? <laughs> that's, not a great, that's not a great image. It's not a great advert for you, is it? It's not, is it? Simple as that. The reason I'm saying that you get involved in your community is because actually it's showing how brilliant you are and it shows how different you are. Because there are a lot of instructors that will get out of the car at 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night, shut the door and think nothing more of it. Okay? One of the biggest things that has come out of this, is this industry for me is that I'm a regular on BBC Hereford and Worcester. So if there's anything in the press about um, you know, road safety or about accidents or anything like that, I'm the first guy they give a call to, which is great stuff. And I've actually used it. If you go to the Fresh Ideas uh, YouTube channel, there was a video where I took the breakfast show hosts out on mock driving tests. I gave them a mock theory test and a mock driving test because they'd forgotten how difficult it was to pass a driving test. They both failed. They both failed actually on, 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 on their manoeuvres, but they failed in other things as well. And they actually suddenly realised how much more difficult it was. Now, I was serving the community because you know what the press is like. The press are going to get straight on young drivers' backs and they're going to say, oh, the young drivers are terrible, they're awful, they're rubbish. Actually, when you put them through a driving test, they actually sit there and go, God, that's actually a damn sight harder to pass now than it was when we took our test. Yeah? And it's great PR. Okay? If you get involved in your community, it is great PR for you. It is definitely showing how different a driving instructor you are to everybody else and you'll see why you need to show people why you're different a little bit later. How can you show how normal you are? All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you this answer. Do nothing. Do absolutely nothing. Leave here today and think, nah, I'm not going to do any of that. Doesn't apply to me. Doesn't make a difference. Yes, it does. How can you show how brilliant you are? Now, I'm going to show you a video from 1982. Ready Breck with lashings of hot milk to soak up those natural oats, malt and vitamins. All goodness and nothing wasted. This is the way to start the day on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way to glue to school, glue to school, glue to school. This is the way to glue to school, glue to school, glue to school. This is the way to glue to school, glue to school, glue to school. This is the way to glue to school. Ready Brick, central heating for kids. Who remembers that advert? <laughs> There's a couple of... This young lady here is going, absolutely not a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> I really haven't, OK? <laughs> Anybody know why that was stopped in 1982? It was called Chernobyl. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. The advertisers suddenly realised that it wasn't a good idea you should wake up with an orange glow after a nuclear reactor had just gone off. Go figure, they were probably right. <laughs> now, the reason I show you that, okay, is because brilliance starts from here and starts from there. If you show it to every single one of your customers, your pupils, even if you're just getting out of the car, you're going to McDonald's, the toilet, whatever. I'm giving a great plug to Mackey's today, aren't I? All right, if you just go to Starbucks, other coffee places are available, obviously. All right, but if you get out of the car and you are showing that glow all the time, do you know what? People are going to think you're brilliant. Now, I was asked last week, I did sort of a sort of semi-presentation of this last week and how you can feel brilliant. Because otherwise, we have what's known as destination addiction. Okay? And it's a terrible thing. We all suffer from it. Who gets up on a Monday morning at about 6 o'clock and can't wait for about 6 o'clock on Friday? It's true, isn't it? Yeah? It's terrible. Okay? I'm going to give you a startling fact that might scare you. The average human being on this planet, if they live to the age of 76, has 4,000 weeks on this earth. How many of you have now got less than 2,000 weeks in this room? <laughs> At home, has got a pair of those underpants that are called safe underpants. They're the ones that sort of just sit in the back of your underwear drawer that when you haven't done the washing for a week, are just kind of there. They're like your safe knickers, your big knickers. I'm trying not to look at you. Yeah, I really am. I don't know why. But who's got like the same? You do have them. The Bridget Jones knickers. There you go. Even blokes have got Bridget Jones pants. Yeah, they have, right? Okay. What I want you to do when you get home is throw those pants out. I do. I want you to throw those pants out or I want you to use them as a duster. Well, I mean like that. 
okay, save the planet and all that, yeah, we pay 5p for a carrier bag, yeah, you might as well use your knickers to sort of like dust your TV or something, it's fine, okay? When you go out on a special day, on a special event, on a special night, so it's like a Christmas party, or even be invited to somebody's wedding, or you know, I was about to say funeral, but that's not kind of the right thing. But if you sort of like invited to somebody's wedding or a christening or something like that, you kind of dress up. Yeah, you put on a suit like this. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, it looks like I'm about to pay sort of like a frame of snooker, so I apologise. But yeah, so you put you put your special pants on, you put your special underwear on. And the thing is, when you put that special underwear and that special pair of pants on, you feel amazing. Yeah? Who's gone to a wedding and actually thinks, do you know what? I look the part. <laughs> I look the business. Yeah? And then you look at the wedding pictures afterwards and you just go, you look, you look terrible. Yeah? You'd look better in a brass rubbing yeah? than on a, bit on a picture. Yeah? It's true. But you have that feeling. Yeah? You, walk to, you go to that wedding and you go, yeah, I'm suited and booted, I'm not wearing jeans. I am feeling fantastic. That's the kind of feeling you want to portray to your customers. That nothing is a problem. Yeah? That everything is amazing. A great example of one of the best people that you could ever base your life on where absolutely nothing is a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob the Builder. <laughs> Who here has watched Bob the Builder? Yeah? Who here has noticed that Bob the Builder has, in fact, had an industrial accident because he's only got four fingers? That'll be me, yeah? I've noticed that, OK? But if you ever watch Bob the Builder, Bob the Builder could actually sort out our building trade like that tomorrow. He really could. Because if you ever watch an episode of Bob the Builder, he's, he's always sort of given a task. He's given a task to do. Have you ever seen Bob the Builder turn up to this task and go, <sighs> Oh, your electrics are shot. <sighs> Oh, there's a bit of woodworm around there, isn't there? Oh, look at the dry rot over there. Oh, I'll tell you what. That's a bit more than you said. Let me just sort this out. Hey, get the kettle on. Four sugars. Thanks very much. Who's seen that? He's never done it, has he? He's just got in there. He's got the job done. And when there's that moment of impending doom, when something's about to go wrong, okay, he turns around to his team and says, can we fix it? And what do they say? Yes, we can. You have watched it, haven't I, haven't it? <laughs> but it's true. Nothing is ever a problem. If you're feeling good about you and your business, nothing's a problem. Not everyone will like you because you've got a different attitude. And I'm going to give you a bit of reassurance. It's okay. You don't have to get on with everybody. Not every customer, not every client has to like you. You don't even have to like them. Not every driving instructor you have to like, yeah? You don't have to be part of the team. You don't have to actually appreciate them. You are individuals, you have individual businesses. Even if you come under a franchise, it's you, it's your personal brand. It's all good, it's fine. So I'm gonna give you one task. Just one task from this presentation. Who remembers seeing that? Bridget Jones's diary. It's your favourite. Why does that not surprise me? Um, <laughs> we just met you as well. <laughs> right? Who here, as a driving instructor, is driven by their diary? Do not lie. All right? Now, everybody's saying, no, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Because I bet you know where you are at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I bet you know where you are at 11 o'clock on a Thursday, on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, Friday afternoon, Friday morning. Yeah? Every single driving instructor is driven. Okay? So I'm going to give you this. All right? I want you to diarise one simple thing in your diary that is going to show your current customers, current clients, or your community that you are different and you are brilliant from the rest. It could be one simple thing. It could be writing a blog. It could be putting a, a really sensible post out on your driving instructor page. Yeah? Your driving instructor page is actually your best bit of advertising. But God help people are really sick and bored of just saying, congratulations to John Smith on passing his driving test. And then nothing posted for the next four weeks whilst you wait for another driving test. Okay? You're not marketing yourself for four weeks because you haven't put anything on there. A very quick one because this is the last slide now. And I'll give you a very quick one. I wrote a blog about four years ago, five years ago now. 
that um, I took my son to school. He was at primary school, and I took him to school. And the parking and the driving around my son's school was shocking, was atrocious. How many, how many instructors have that problem in their areas? Everybody. Everybody does. Yeah? Okay? It took me half an hour to write this blog, and I wrote it from the heart, because trust me, I was angry. I was really peeved. Okay, at the way that some of these drivers were basically just putting other, ki other people's kids in danger. And I got really angry about it. And I posted it, and I posted it on our driving school page. Within 24 hours, I actually had my first contact from Hereford and Worcester, because it had actually been posted to their Facebook page. And they said, could you come in? Could you come and have a chat about this? Because obviously this is a bit of a problem in other schools. So that had gone to about sort of 1,300 people by the time I appeared on the radio at 7 a.m. the next morning. By the end of that day, that blog had been read by 9,000 people. Now, all I was doing was venting my spleen a little bit because I was so angry, OK? That was it. That was it as far as I'm concerned. A couple of customers rung up. Oh, it's very different. We like that. We completely agree. We'd like you to teach our son or daughter to drive. Thank you very much. Nice and easy. About 12 months later, there was another instructor who had had a similar problem outside his local primary school. And he'd remembered my blog. And he'd set up a page about it. He set up a community page, and it was a community page, so anybody in his area could actually see and take a look at it. OK? And what happened was he said, do you mind if I use your blog? Not a problem. Excellent. I checked it this morning. That blog has been read by 127,000 people up and down the country. All right? Would you say that I've done a service to my local community and other people's communities? Yeah? See, the tough thing is, you all have the knowledge to do exactly that same thing. And yes, it will get you customers, but it will show that you are different. It will show that you care. It will show that you are passionate about your job, and it will show that you are passionate about your business. Ladies and gentlemen, that, stuff like that, will show that you are brilliant. Thank you very much.